Hello and welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to address a topic that I frequently see commented on a lot of my videos. Should I get a degree in engineering and how do I know which type of engineering to study? How do I survive school to get my degree? What will my job be like once I start working? And what does the future of my career look like? These are all great questions. I'm going to speak some to my experiences and the experiences of others to kind of help you decide what type of engineer you want to be and really know better what the future may hold for you. So let's get into it. First of all, why engineering? Well, if you're interested in how things work, you might make a great engineer. You probably enjoy math and science. You enjoy a number of shows about technology, how things are made shows where they bust myths. You watch engineering channels on YouTube. You're on one right now. And I think another point to consider, and this isn't bad, as a kid or teenager or young adult, it might seem a little weird, but you want a nice stable career with growing opportunities. That's a great thing about engineering as well. Aside from the passion, it's just a nice career. I think it's important to stress that you don't have to fit every item on this list. There's no perfect mold for what makes a great engineer. Uh, on that first slide, I had a kind of an old advertisement for engineering. You know, engineering was typically just like white dudes getting degrees in mechanical engineering or aerospace, things like that. But engineering today is so diverse. You have men and women, uh, different races, people from different backgrounds. You don't have to necessarily fit some predetermined mold for engineering. You always hear these great stories about, oh, this great engineer, they used to take apart the family fridge when they were a kid. Just because you're not constantly taking things apart as a kid doesn't mean you won't be a great engineer. I was an industrial engineer, which is very process focused, so I wasn't always tinkering with mechanical objects, but I was a natural at industrial engineering because it just came easy to me, and I found myself curious about processes. So as I took some classes in it, I just found that it made sense to me and I enjoyed it. And that's really what you want to find the crossroads of. Something you enjoy, but also something you're good at so you can stay competitive. So what can you do with engineering? What might you enjoy or what might you be good at? Well, what's great about engineering, and especially nowadays, is that it literally almost means anything. You know, you've got the typical, oh, you're building bridges because you're an engineer. You know, you're designing spaceships, a lot of the stereotypical things. And those are things done by engineers. That is true. You can design and build prosthetic limbs. You can design and build manufacturing processes. You can research, design, or build advanced materials, pharmaceuticals, biological solutions. You can just manage more than design. You can even be a financial engineer and focus just on economies and money and things of that nature. You can do practically anything as an engineer. And I have a video that goes over some of the more common types of engineering if you're interested in some specifics. But let's move on to what school might look like as an engineer. So obviously, one of the stereotypes of engineering is that you have to do lots of hard schooling. And I think this can be true in a sense, but again, if you find yourself naturally good at math and science, you'll probably find school not so difficult if you study hard. So here's an example of a curriculum um, from MIT, one of the best known engineering schools in the United States, and this is for mechanical engineering. So let's look at some of the classes you would have to take to become a mechanical engineer from MIT. You've got mechanics and materials, you're probably going to be taking calculus and physics at the same time. Uh, dynamics and controls. So a lot of engineers take mechanics, dynamics and statics, things of that nature. So a lot of these are pretty common, even at other schools. Thermal fluids. I've heard that's a tough one. I never took that for industrial. Uh, a lot of other engineers will. You have the product engineering process. That might be more of a product design standpoint. Uh, numerical computation for mechanical engineers design and manufacturing. I took a few classes with names like that. Design of electromechanical robotic systems. So again, uh, you get some electrical classes in there. You'll find that with a lot of types of engineering, you'll take at least one or two classes from other disciplines of engineering. So I think a lot of schools really put a focus in being more well-rounded and at least being aware of the other types of engineering. 
Now we'll move on to an industrial engineering example. So this is the type of engineer that I was, and this is actually the curriculum from the University of Dayton. Uh, so that's where I got my bachelor's from. You'll see on here there's general chemistry. That's pretty common for a lot of engineers. Electrical circuits. We have statics and dynamics. There's a lot of core classes that almost any type of engineer will take. Of course, calculus. Lean management and Six Sigma. Uh, project management, statistical process control. So you'll see with industrial engineering that there's a lot more process oriented courses. But you'll notice too, there is a lot of overlap even with mechanical engineering at MIT. So now that you've seen a few curriculums for different types of engineering, you might be wondering, how do I survive? Do you have any advice for how to get through college? Sure. The first thing I'd say is, find the engineering you enjoy the most. It's okay if you start out mechanical to switch to electrical or industrial, or if you start out chemical and decide, hey, this is too hard. I like some of the classes, but it's too difficult. I need something that I find myself a little more natural at. But I wouldn't say make that jump right away until you really give it a good shot. You know, really put the effort in for a semester or two before you decide that I should probably switch to something different. And even in general, it's okay to take a step back and say, I don't think engineering is for me at all. If you find yourself not liking any of the classes or really being that interested in engineering at all, maybe you're not meant to be an engineer. That's okay. We need other types of people in this world. I switched to business because I found business concepts interesting and I thought it would be a good combination of skills to have. It doesn't mean I wouldn't have been a decent engineer my entire life. It just meant I wanted to try something different. But if you are staying in engineering, regardless of what type, you're going to need to study hard. Even if school comes naturally to you, you'll want to really make sure you retain the skills you're learning. Because when you go into the workforce, it's hard to know what skills you'll need exactly. So really, just spend at least an hour or two every day studying what you've learned, even if you're doing well in school. Spend part of the weekend looking at your textbook again or reading a book related to one of your subjects. You'd be really surprised how much studying helps you retain things over the long run and how much less stressed you'll be when you're doing great on tests and homework. It's important to remember too though, especially for engineers, that there's more than just a job and class. It's very important to be involved with clubs and extracurricular activities. Some of the best engineers are very well-rounded. So go to clubs for your type of engineering or related types, or even clubs based on math or science or just anything you find interesting. Interact with people. Learn how to communicate about things you like, things they like. Do extracurriculars. If you like soccer or football, play it. If you like spelling bees, go do it. It's just important to be involved and have a good social life. If you can learn to communicate well as an engineer and be aware of other disciplines, those are going to translate really well when you're working professionally and you'll move into higher positions quicker. It'll just make you a happier person as well. So it's easy to say that, right? But if you're introverted like I was, and a lot of engineers are stereotypically introverted, it can be hard to actually go out and do things. For me, it really helped. I forced myself to do one extracurricular activity, one club activity every week, but I waited until my junior and senior years. And it was tough at first, but if you really set some goals for yourself and force yourself to get out, you'll find that you begin to enjoy things and things become less awkward and you'll actually end up making friends. And if I had started with that mindset my freshman and sophomore years and even made the goals a bit more difficult, I would have been that much better a person and engineer when I graduated. My final bit of advice would be try to work a variety of internships as often as you can. Um, even if they're not paid, that's fine. Get into the field as early as possible. If after the end of your freshman year, there's only really one internship out there and it's not paid and you're not really sure if you're going to enjoy it much, if it's related to engineering and specifically your discipline, especially your discipline, go do it. If you're worried about making money, of course, that's fine. Have a job on the side, but at least try to go do something related to engineering. Especially because it's an internship, it has a set ending date. So six, eight, ten weeks, even if you don't end up enjoying it and you don't get much value out of it, you'll get more out of it than you realize. It'll be a resume builder. It will give you a glimpse into the world of engineering, into the professional world. And typically, you find kind of the all-stars in engineering go from one internship to the next. So even though maybe your first internship wasn't that great, 
your second one will be better. And you got that second one because you had that first one. And by the time you're on to your third or fourth internships, you can be working for some really great companies doing some actual real engineering work. And that makes it that much easier when you're transitioning into a full-time career. So let's move on to the final subject in this video. What will your future be like? Wouldn't it be great if we all had a crystal ball and could know exactly what the future holds? Well, that's not possible. But engineering, there's a lot of trends that you can notice and take advantage of. So, of course, just like the discipline itself, the careers you can have as an engineer vary as much as the types of engineering. But, in general, chances are as an engineer you'll be doing some of the following things. You'll be using a computer to design, simulate, or analyze data. And that doesn't really vary much, whether you're mechanical, electrical, computer engineer, you're going to be using a computer a lot. That's why some of these stereotypes about engineers being big computer nerds are in place. So get good with computers and realize that if you want to be an engineer, hopefully you like being on a computer a decent amount. You will probably have to present on your work and try to make a business case for whether something should be done or not. And not probably, I guarantee you will do this at some point. That's why it's important to be involved with extracurriculars and clubs when you're in school. You'll get comfortable talking to people and summarizing complicated ideas. Especially moving forward into the future, things move so quickly. Gone are the days where you had a set job, a set meeting, and a set argument to make. A lot of times nowadays, your manager won't even be that involved with what you're doing. And eventually, once they trust you, you're going to have to do all the research and make the case at a very high level. So you have to get comfortable with these presentation skills. Your future will often involve the practical side of engineering, which isn't always clear in school. So what do I mean by the practical side? Well, that's kind of that uncomfortable area between hard data and taking chances. So especially right out of school, a lot of fresh engineers will want to collect all the data. They'll want to run all these analyses on an item. And that's fine and dandy, but you'll find a lot of times in the professional world, you don't have the time or resources to collect all the data you want. You're going to have to make decisions that seem a little bit uncomfortable to you. And you're going to find that things outside the hard data begin to matter. Like, if you're implementing a solution, who's going to be working on that solution? How well do you get along with your coworkers, the people above you, and the people below you? Things that you wouldn't have necessarily considered before because they're outside the realm of just hard science and hard fact. These are the practical things that you're going to get better at as an engineer. And the sooner you can learn these things, the sooner you can find a mentor or observe these things and practice them, the better. And the final bit of outlook on your future is that if you're good at your job, eventually you're going to transition into a management role in which you will supervise others. So this is why it's important as an engineer to kind of have a broad view and get comfortable talking to people. It's funny because a lot of careers, the higher up you go, the more it just becomes general business. But as you learn the technical skills well in school and in practice, and you begin to develop that practical mindset, you're going to find that you're naturally starting to lead others, or you're being asked to take on more and more responsibilities. So in your future, you're probably going to end up being a manager. Um, if, if you have ambition and you really like to learn new things and take on new ambitious goals, you're going to end up in management. So just be prepared for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. At this point, I would just like to point out that this video in no way gives all the advice on how you should succeed in school or what different types of engineering there are or what your future may look like. But I tried to get a good variety of info on the different types of engineering, how to succeed at school, and what the future may look like. Because I found that people were frequently asking questions about this. And just in general, it can be a scary thing. If you're going into a new field, you're not sure what the future will hold, you're not really sure what career you should get into, it's hard. And at the end of the day, you're just going to have to make that leap. But do as much research as you can, uh, talk to people, really get out there and see what you like. And at the end of the day, don't be scared to change if you're not happy, because you want to be happy and good at what you're doing at the end of the day. So thanks again for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Have a great day.